what you are today and what you will be in five years depends heavily on the people you meet and the books you read. Your environment and the information that you receive every day from various sources all shape what you create and what you will evolve into as an individual and a creator. Hello, I'm Mika and in this video I'll give you a tour of my bookshelves, share some of my favorite books and show you some that influence my work even to this day. Reading is one of my favorite things in life and I loved collecting books since I was a child. Literature is my safe place when I want to escape the real world and don't feel like embracing rules and adult life just yet. I love stories, interesting characters and different perspectives. Reading gives me the time to understand even a bold point of view at my own pace and to not rush to pick a side. Fiction stimulates my imagination and pushes me to create my own visual world through my work and photography. These days I'm more interested in essays, psychology and philosophy because it excites me so much to discover the mysteries of what it means to be human and what shapes our society. Classic literature is a big part of my collection, but I've started reading more modern authors too. The book Flights by Olga Tokarczuk is a very unique book that I really like. It is intermittently a work of fiction, but it is also an exercise in theory, cultural anthropology and memoir. I've bought this book on my way to Amsterdam airport and coincidentally Tokarczuk's book is all about mobility and how this is the engine of creativity. My favorite author is Jorge Luis Borges, an Argentinian author who was blind for the most part of his life. This disability didn't stop him from becoming one of the most important authors of our time. In his work, he explores the paradox of time, self, and the subtle line between reality and a dream. Among his books, there is the book of imaginary beings where he introduces legendary monsters throughout history and mythology. Sand is connected to memories, so while reading I light my favorite candle to elevate the whole experience and enjoy it at its fullest. Today I received a bergamot and sage candle from Arthur. Arthur's candles are considered and celebrating a slower and more mindful pace of creativity captured in a refined and timeless object. Arthur is a brand that values the everyday small moments that build our life not just the big occasions or celebrations. This mindset aligns to my perspective of living as good as we can regardless the circumstances. The subtle bergamot scent and the refreshing sage let my mind wander to unexplored gardens and citrus groves way back to my childhood. Speaking of citrus groves, I grew up running along the trees in my grandfather's orange and lemon groves. I learned to love the connection with nature and I believe this is the reason why gardening books 
and nature-related literature fascinates me. A friend of mine gave me as a present Penelope Lively's Life in the Garden. It became one of my favorite books because this is a book that gives words to something that those of us who garden know by instinct. How being in the garden raises the spirits, that our gardens are reflections of our secret selves, places of memory and nostalgia in which we perform complex rituals of hope, faith and personal growth. Speaking of personal growth, I do have a batch of self-development books. These range from creativity, business, psychology, leadership and soft skills. If you're a creative who deals with a creative block or imposter syndrome, I highly recommend Fake Perfection by James Victoria. In Fake Perfection, Victoria will guide you through all the twists, trials and triumphs of starting your creative career. From finding your voice to acting today on your most revolutionary ideas like when you did as a kid. This book changed the way I see creation and gave me courage to move forward and to do the work every single day. As an art director, I need to keep my mind stimulated by studying other artists. One of my favorite thing is to study the work of the old masters like Michelangelo, contemporary artists like David Hockney and iconic photographers like Helmut Newton. Irving Penn's still life inspires me deeply and pushes me to reinvent everyday objects and turn them into unexpected and innovative compositions. I love his work because it's clean and extremely symbolic. To this day, every time I work on a project, I go back to artists that inspire me to clear my head and trigger my creativity. Another book that challenged my way of thinking and my work is Wabi Sabi by Beth Campton. Wabi Sabi in traditional Japanese aesthetics is a worldview centered on the acceptance of imperfection. Characteristics of Wabi Sabi include asymmetry, roughness, simplicity, intimacy, and the appreciation of both natural objects and the forces of nature. And that concludes my bookshelf tour. If you're interested in the things I've shared today, I've left links and notes in the description below. Feel free to ask me anything by leaving a comment or your favorite book title.